many days, uh, we have endeavored to do what Chairman Kim and I had agreed, was to put teams, preparation teams, together to begin to work to prepare for the summit. And we had received no response to our inquiries from them. The release of the president's letter coincided unerringly with the North Koreans playing host to a group of Western journalists invited to witness the destruction of a nuclear test site. But there was fury in Washington when Pyongyang put out a statement last night describing the vice president as ignorant and stupid. And there seemed to be a threat. We can also make the US taste an appalling tragedy. At the heart of this is the demand for the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, a phrase that sounds simple but is open to vastly different interpretations. This might have been a historic summit in seeing these two leaders sit down at a table together. But as time went on, it became increasingly clear that's all it would be. Great expectations have been replaced by a cold dose of reality. John Sopel, BBC News, Washington. Well, for more on these developments, I spoke a bit earlier to Bruce Klingner. He's a former CIA Deputy Division Chief for Korea who's now at the Heritage Foundation. Where do we go from here? Are we back to look at little rocket man and who has the biggest nuclear button, or is there still a chance for diplomacy? Well, I think in the, the wording of the president's letter, as well as his subsequent statement, did seem to leave the door open for a summit. There were a number of phrases of, you know, if you want to get back together, if you're interested in this. So I, I don't think he's totally closed the door. So if North Korea does come through the door with some kind of non-apology apology as they may do uh, then we could get back to discussions and perhaps negotiations or even a summit uh, but really the ball is in North Korea's court now whether they if they go back to the usual provocations missile tests nuclear tests then the tension is going to rise do you think North Korea miscalculated with its recent, recent statements? Uh, very much so. Uh, there had been a great deal of optimism, particularly in South Korea, I think a bit of irrational exuberance in South Korea. But things seemed to be moving along, that uh, North Korea had generated a lot of goodwill, a lot of in, improved perceptions of Kim Jong-un. Then with the statements, there were three last week and then some more this week, I think they really uh, miscalculated. They Not only the Trump administration wasn't going to have any part of it, but really the mood in Washington is there's just no patience for those kind of tactics anymore. But yet the North Koreans also made the gesture of apparently blowing up their nuclear missile test site. Right, but they had canceled an inter-Korean meeting. They had stood up of U.S. officials that were waiting to meet in Singapore to prepare for the, the Trump summit. Uh, they'd made a number of insulting comments about U.S. officials and even South Korean officials. And I think most importantly, uh, they had really publicly articulated that they would reject what not only the U.S. but the U.N. was requiring was this comprehensive, verifiable, irreversible dismantlement. So do you think anything is actually being gained by this whole process of setting up for the summit and getting as far as, as both sides seem to have? Well, the U.S. would see it as once again we've tried diplomacy and that uh, North Korea undermined it. Uh, when people in the past have said the U.S. should try to reach out to them, Diplomats will tell you, not only from this administration, but the previous one, that they've tried repeatedly to reach out to North Korea, and it was always Pyongyang that rejected those entreaties. Where do we go from here, though? What, what should the U.S. be doing, particularly when it comes to China? Well, what we should do is, is maintain the maximum pressure policy, which actually is not maximum. There's a number of things that we're still pulling our punches on uh, to not only implement U.N. sanctions, but also to enforce U.S. law. I think most notably a uh, hesitation to go after Chinese financial entities that are helping North Korea and which are misusing the U.S. financial system. Bruce Klingner, thanks very much for joining mm -hmm. me. Now, Harvey Weinstein is expected to surrender to New York City police as early